Thank you very much. Uh, so yes, my name is Jack, <coughs> and I want to apologize because when I came to the U.S. 15 years ago, I started in New Jersey, so I got a slight New Jersey accent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you have to keep up with me. Uh, I agree totally with you, Michael. Uh, if we want to tackle one of the biggest challenges of our lifetime and the lifetime of our children, being uh, curbing greenhouse gases while uh, keeping our lifestyle, uh, we need to do a lot. And actually, we see three ways forward in our river. We see uh, first uh, the easiest, actually, the energy, the, the most uh, Environmental friendly energy is the one you do not consume. So as I said to my children, turn out the lights. Energy efficiency. And Susan, you're going to talk about it. But it's not easy. And you, also, we need to upgrade our network, our grid. And uh, we need also carbon capture sequestration. I was very happy to see that uh, we may I mean, go back and trying to, to do something about it. And finally, uh, it's what we do at Arriva. We believe we need an CO2-free energy mix, renewable and nuclear. And let me tell you right off the bat, as we say in New Jersey, nuclear for us is not the solution, no. But there is no solution without nuclear. Let me repeat also, there is no solution without nuclear. And I hope I can be heard, I mean, across the street. So, um, just to tell you about Arriva uh, a little bit, if you don't know our company, uh, it's a large corporation, um, of course, uh, born in France, but uh, we're really global now. Uh, it's how we represent our company. Uh, there was a, a little uh, ad, actually, maybe you saw it last uh, September, with a funky town music. So, we do everything from cradle to grave in nuclear, from mining, we have mines around the globe, uh, through chemistry and, uh, and the fabrication of fuel. Uh, we build and service nuclear plants. Uh, we recycle fuel, and I look to Susan because she, uh, she, we had the honor to receive her last year, actually in our plant in France, to we actually, yes, nuclear fuel is recyclable. So this is the, the little round here. And we have uh, also, uh, you may be interested to know that we are also very present in transmission and distribution. And we believe a lot in uh, transmission and distribution and smart grids. And if you want to know us more, we are on the web, and we just launched a blog, actually. And we are very proud of this, and we want to reach to the new generation. So you go to www.us.arivablog.com, and you can say anything you want about nuclear and our company. Uh, what, do, what do we see in the future? Uh, the future globally, I mean, actually, nuclear is bad globally. I mean, maybe it's uh, not really, uh, you don't see it here, the Renaissance, but... Uh, if you are in Europe, every day there is news about nuclear. I mean, the, the, the Brits actually decided to come back to nuclear. Italians decided to come back a month ago, the Swedes. So we see that today uh, around the world we have about 400, 272 gigawatt electric uh, nuclear. Uh, we believe that uh, we will have about the double, 635 in 2030. But because our fleet, our nuclear fleet is old, and uh, the fleet here is going to age and retire. Even if we have light extension, you may know that actually we are building nuclear plants as we right now, you don't know it. What we do, we just extend the life of the current one from 40 to 60 years. So we are building new power. But we will need construction. We will need about 344 uh, gigawatt electric of construction, which is about 300 new reactors. And ambition, as you said, the ambition of my chairperson, Alain Vergeon, is that we are going to build 100 of them. It's not so difficult, actually. It's, it means uh, it's a big number, but it's not so difficult, because we've done it already. Actually, in Arriva, we never stopped building. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little story. I was 10 years old in 73. I was in France, and we were uh, hit by the oil crisis. And it was very interesting, actually. Because I remember very much, my, my father was a doctor, a young doctor. And my father couldn't go and see his patients anymore. Because it's not like last year, it was very expensive at the gas pump. You know, everybody had cried, $4 a gallon. There was no gas at the pump. I don't know if it happened like this in the U.S., but in France, actually, in two months, for two months, we didn't have gas anymore at the pump. So it's why it was a shock. 
And uh, because in France we don't have coal. In France, I mean, you said it's geology, so France has no coal, no oil, no gas, wine, I agree, good wine. And cheese, actually, good cheese. <laughs> uh, but it's not enough, actually. So we tried to, put, to pump wine into the, the, the motor vehicle, it didn't work out. So we decided to uh, go full steam nuclear. So the main reason why uh, France is today, I mean, 80% of the, the energy is coming from nuclear is for energy security. Not to reduce the carbon footprint, we didn't know about it. Energy security. So our company uh, was tasked to build about 80 power plants, actually about 60 in France and about 20 in Germany. And actually at the end of this, uh, it was a 30 years campaign, we thought it was going to be finished, and actually the next wave hit. And it's what we call the new generation, the gener generation three plus reactors of a PWR, uh, pressure water reactors. They are called EPR. These reactors are the safest on the planet. They were designed for it. It's like, I mean, imagine a big concrete box. Nothing, nothing can go in, even a 747, and nothing can go out, even a molten core. It's very, very safe. And so, uh, because you cannot travel, I know it's very expensive now to travel, um, I'm going to take you there. We are building some of them. So we are building the first unit in Finland. What you see here, if you go to Finland, you see what is called a reactor containment building. It's almost erected now, it's done. Uh, actually, all the heavy components are manufactured and delivered. They are on site, so you can see. And so this, this will be the first Gen 3 Plus reactor being built, and we hope that it will go online between 2011 and 2012. If you don't want to travel to Finland, you can stop, as Susan did, in France, actually in Normandy. Maybe you saw it from La Hague, I don't know, but it's just across the bay. It's in Flamanville. We are building a second reactor, and this is what you will see today. So we're studying, actually, erection of the reactor containment building. And uh, if you go to China, oh, does it work? No, it doesn't work. You can see uh, we are also uh, building two plants over there, and you will see excavation. So we are building uh, these type of reactors across the world, and my ambition, it is why I came here uh, in September, is that I hope we can do the same here in the United States. And actually, it will be very close to Washington, D.C., because the first site to be picked will be uh, with Constellation. It will be in Calvert Cliff. It will be on Ch Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay. And we hope to start construction in 2012, which will be ideal, because we finished construction in France. And we come here and start construction here, so we can copy everything they've done over there. And not we do the same mistakes. Uh, it's very important, actually. I mean, the, the reason why the French program was so successful is because it was done after the American program. You need to know that, the, actually, the French reactor were based on the Westinghouse technology. So it was a gift, well, not a gift, actually, but uh, with a small fee. From France to America, we're just returning the gift now, which is more fee. Uh, so how do we get there? I mean, it's, it's a big question because, because it's a lot of work. And uh, we really ask uh, inside our company, our company is about 70,000 people, and uh, most of our workforce was aging because, remember, it was the first wave of the nuclear uh, reactors, so they were going uh, to, uh, I mean, um, own retirement. So uh, we are looking at, we have put together a, a program called Bridge the Gap, how we can bridge the gap between the past and the future. And we looked at everything inside the company, our resources, our capacities, our processes, and we came up with some answers, and I'm going to share with you the answers. First, uh, we saw that we have a gap in terms of fuel certainty, because the issue when you buy a reactor is you, this reactor is going to be uh, I mean, online for 60 years. So you need fuel certainty. You need to make sure that you're going to get uranium for 60 years. So in order to do that, we decided to buy mines around the world and to accelerate exploration. So now we have mines in Canada, we have mines in, uh, in Africa, and we have mines in Kazakhstan. A very important component is the enrichment of the fuel. Uh, something you may not know, but the uranium from the ground needs to be enriched, meaning it's a very complex and expensive chemical process to, to transform the uranium, uranium from the ground to uranium that is fitted usable in nuclear reactor. These are very, very large plants. 
and they were aging. So we are building a new plant called Georges Best 2 in France, based on ultra centrifugation, and it will produce, start producing actually uh, at the middle of this year. And the good news for America and for jobs here is that we have decided last year, our chairman decided that we will come to the U.S because the U.S. needs to rebuild its nuclear infrastructure, and we need to be independent from the rest of the world here in the U.S. So we decided to invest, to invest about two to three billion dollars here in Idaho to build an enrichment plant. It's called Eagle Rock. We have submitted the license application at the end of last year, and we expect uh, uh, to start production in 2014. We also saw that uh, it was very important to uh, assure our customers that we have a supply chain. Because what happened is that this a re a nuclear reactor is a lot of concrete and a lot of heavy components from steel. And we have lost here in the U.S. forging and manufacturing capacity. So what we done first, we revived the plants in France. Actually, the plant you see, Chalon saint martel was almost closed, going to be closed in 2000 at the end of the French nuclear program. And actually, Anno version said, no, no, don't close it yet. I see the Renaissance coming. And if you go to the plant now, there is very good wine. It's in Burgundy, actually, of course. You want to go there? You see that you see a big American flag. Why? Because this plant is working 90% for the American reactors, changing heavy components for the current fleet. We have we've, we've revitalized uh, a new uh, forge called Far Steel. And what you said, uh, it's, uh, we just uh, actually in the middle of the financial crisis, people were asking me how you're going to finance it, and I went, so cash, and well, like, oh, you have cash? Yes, we, we save cash. So we invest $400 million here in Newport News, in the shipyards, uh, with a North of Grumman to build a, a manufacturing facility for heavy components. And last but not least, very important to us is workforce, the people, actually it's rank for our company is the people, the rest come with it. So in order to, uh, to achieve our goal, we needed to hire and train a lot of people. So we are hiring one person per hour. We've done it since 2007 and we're going to continue to do so until 2012. One person per hour and we are going to continue to hire them and train them. I'm almost done. And, but uh, before I, I close my speech, I want to share also, uh, it's my last personal story, uh, to tell you that I, become, I became actually uh, an American citizen about four years ago. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> I didn't do it for it. Huh? I did it because uh, I believe a lot in this country, and my, my kids are here, they were born here, and I want to live with them here. And, uh, no, and, uh, but, but also because I believe, I think this country is full of opportunity. And uh, when I became an American citizen, uh, what you go through is a very, a very simple uh, exam. But after, what is very moving is the ceremony, the swearing ceremony. And when you go around the room, you have about people from 50 different nationalities, and most of them are crying. And they're crying because uh, they are told that now they're citizens and they can vote. And something you may not know, because you, most of you are born here, you think it's granted. It's not for granted for most of the world. I mean, these people couldn't vote. Couldn't, couldn't express their opinion. Actually, we were told at that time, we were as citizens as every citizen, and we could vote and we could criticize the government. So this is a new right of mine that I'm going to take up with you today. <laughs> so I'm going to exercise my free speech. I'm going to talk through you to uh, the new administration, to my president, uh, Barack Obama, because I voted this year. Uh, just to tell uh, the president that uh, we, okay, nuclear is not the only solution, but we need nuclear. And if uh, we are given loan guarantee, I'm not talking about bailout, huh? it's different. Loan guarantee, and it's not a bailout. Loan guarantee, just a guarantee to get a loan. It doesn't cost the same money than a bailout. And uh, I can promise the president and this country a lot, a lot of jobs. And we need jobs now. And actually, with all the investment we're making here, 90%, 90% of our reactor will be built made in America. So you can see, I mean, uh, we're talking about 150 billion in private investment, 21 plants to be constructed here, 100,000 direct jobs. So this is my appeal to President Obama. 
And uh, if we do that, I mean, I can assure you that uh, if you look at the nuclear footprint, and I call it an energy new deal, because I read, uh, as all you did, I mean, about the history, and the first new deal with uh, presi uh, the President Roosevelt. At that time, he built a big dam. So I'm just asking that we build a new nuclear dam, and maybe new coal plant with a uh, carbon coal sequestration. We need that. And this nuclear dam, let me tell you, they don't have a large carbon footprint. You can see here, they have the same carbon footprint that renewable energy, wind, hydro, or solar. And last but not least, we need to come back to basics. We need to be energy independent, like we did in France. And look at this car. I mean, this is a car, this is a plug-in electric. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the electricity is not coming from the wall. It's not because it's a plug-in electric that it's efficient or clean from CO2 emission. It's clean from CO2 emission if the mean of production are clean. For example, in France, we are going to start, actually, we have a new plant. Actually, the president of France is not, is not on our payroll, I want to say that, but, but he's really advocating nuclear power. And he just asked for a new nuclear plant in France because he wants to be able to power the new electrical cars. I mean, in order to have plug-in electric in this country, we need new means of electricity production. I'm done. I just want to tell you that uh, we are here to stay. I'm here to stay. I thank you for the applause for being American. I'm very proud of it. And we are here not only to bring nuclear power to this country, but to rebuild the industry, uh, the nuclear industry in this country. Thank you so much.